Yeah, we got a call right now on a large red dog that's running loose. In Irving Animal Control Officer oh, Keen Minifee answers a lot of calls about stray pets wandering the city. Your first challenge is finding them. On his way to that call, he happens upon another. He knows just about every stray he spots is one that its owners miss and are likely worried about. Our goal isn't to take them here to the shelter. I mean, our goal is to get them back home. The majority of the animals that come into the shelter are stray animals that are picked up from around the city. When animal services can reunite pets and their owners, it's one of the more rewarding parts of the job. Minifee remembers finding a dog from Colorado. It turned out that the dog had been missing for two years, and a week prior to us calling him, uh, his wife had passed away and his wife had given him this dog as a present. It was like a connection from beyond the grave, the way he felt. I mean, he burst into tears and he just kept saying, there's just no way. And it was this tiny item that brought about that emotional reunion, a microchip implanted in the dog. A microchip actually is about the size of a grain of rice and it gets injected right under the skin on the back of the neck and the dog can never lose it, or the cat can never lose it. We always implant microchips in the same place. You see. Every dog and cat that comes into Irving Animal Services gets a microchip. This scanner can then read a number when it is passed over the pet. So that's the number we actually go and enter into the computer, and it's connected to the database and registered to the owner. If the owner had a microchip to begin with, we're calling the owner. So this dog could already be at home. Right. In fact, the dog would likely be home before even getting to the shelter. Whenever we're out in the field, we pick up an animal that has a microchip. We scan them. We all carry scanners on us. And here's our scanner, our readers. And if it does have a microchip on them, we're able to call that microchip company, get that owner's information, and, and take them straight home. Straight to their house and contact the owner, and those animals never step foot here. Those rapid reunions can be a big relief for worried pet owners. Well, they're surprised and they're happy. I mean, they see that the microchip worked. I mean, it's a permanent form of identification. Animal Services recommends microchips for cats, too. Our number one goal is to get them all back home, you know, just keep them away from the shelter and get them home and back with their family members. Both microchips and collar tags are available at the Animal Care Campus. Animal Services recommends using both a tag and microchip. Tag with ID is hugely important because not every neighbor, not every friend of yours is going to have a scanner. But tags alone are not enough because they can fall off or be removed. Animal Services sometimes hears reasons why owners do not want to microchip their pets. People don't understand how a microchip works and sometimes they think it's a GPS and we can track their pet. It's more like a grocery store scanner with a barcode. As for pain, just watch. This cat and many pets do not even react when getting a microchip. It's similar to getting a vaccine, but when you think about it from the standpoint of how you're protecting your pet, that, that tiny little moment of a little bit of discomfort is definitely worth the benefit of what the microchip is going to do for your pet. We don't want to be impounding these animals and then having to uh, have the animals sit in a stressful environment waiting for their owners to come looking for them. We'd much rather get them right back to their owner. Every employee we talk to has a story of an amazing pet reunion. We were so excited to have him back. It was great. Each story made possible. We reunited a pet with a family after three years. With this tiny chip. We're here to help these animals. Being on the streets is no place to live.